Oh, yeah. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the fringe. I almost started the video by saying, Yeah, we got a brand new show for y'all. Because we're kind of counting on uh, or covering American style politics here on the channel now i want to first off thank everybody who joined us here on the channel yesterday to the astounding viewership record of almost a quarter of a million views on yesterday's video uh thank you to everybody who's subscribed to the channel everybody for their comments everybody for sharing the video out uh you guys have humbled this youtuber very very much but the story doesn't end on yesterday because there's more to talk about if you joined me in the beautiful mrs fringe here on uh <laughs> tuesday night as we broadcast the donald trump kamala harris debate where questionable things happen. Of course, Donald was ganged up on. It was three versus one between Donald Trump, the moderators, Kamala Harris, and also her being proven to be wearing communicating earbuds or earrings during <laughs> the debate. Many things have been questionable, but a lot of Canadians that uh, aren't aware of what's been going on with Donald Trump in the cat memes department, boy, do we have a lot to talk about because people are saying, what is this I'm seeing about cats? What's going on with cats everywhere? Why are pictures of Donald Trump's with cats and geese and all sorts of animals taking storm on the internet? Well, I want to get into that and also why I think the Democratic Party is pounding down on those claiming that it's not true. Uh, it's a big cope and sieve technique. We're going to get into that later in the video. First, let's take a look at this article that's being uh, given to us by The Independent, where it says, Simpsons meme go viral after Trump claims that dogs are being eaten in Springfield. First off, this came out before the debate. It wasn't um, it wasn't anything new, but it says here, clumps, <laughs> clumps, there goes my list, Dexia. Trump's claims have been debunked and widely ridiculed. Uh, let's take a look down here at the article, which again, it's false. We're going to show some footage of that later in the video. A uh, flurry of Simpsons memes have erupted on social media in response to a bizarre and widely false statement about pets made by Donald Trump during his first presidential debate with Kamala Harris on Tuesday. Again, these claims were out before the debate. These memes went viral before the debate happened. In a claim that was almost immediately debunked by ABC News, uh, David Muir, which again, that's questionable, Trump said, in Springfield, they're eating the dogs. The people that came in, they're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people and that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. It's a shame. It's a shame. They're eating the pets. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. It's a shame. <laughs> There's my terrible Trump. Trump was referring to a racist rumor being spread by his running mate, J.D. Vance, that Haitian immigrants in the city of Springfield, Ohio, had been abducting pets and eating them, causing chaos in the town. Springfield Public, or sorry, Springfield Police Division said it was aware of the rumors, but has no information to support them. As a stunned Harris looked on in disbelief, probably because the people in her ear didn't know what to tell her, Muir injected and corrected the former president, adding ABC News did reach out to the city manager there. He told us there had been no credible reports of specific cl uh, claims of pets being harmed, injured, or abused by individuals within the immigrant community. So first off, how did ABC know to reach out to that city manager ahead of time? If Donald Trump brought this up for the first time in the debate, well, how did they know to reach out ahead of time? If that's the case, just asking, wouldn't be doing my due diligence if we didn't ask. Trump protested and said that he had seen stories on TV about pets being eaten, adding, people are seeing on television, they say, my dog was taken and used for food. So maybe he said that, maybe that's a good thing to say for a city manager, I don't know, maybe they're the best. I'll stop with the bad Trump impression. Given that Trump referenced a city named Springfield, it wasn't long before a frenzy of jokes about the fictional hometown of the Simpsons started to appear online with many nods towards the family's dog, Santa's little helper. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, wrote one person on X Twitter, along with a picture of a cartoon dog. Another ex Twitter user quoted Trump by this, but this time also included the image of the Simpsons cat, Snowball 2. I mean... It's it's really I like like for anybody. Look, I'm I'm all for the memes. In fact, I always say the best thing about when Donald Trump becomes president again is the memes and all the 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 great great content and material that's going to drop. Um, I had a blast with Kafifi. I had I loved when Donald Trump 
was in office the first time, Trump 2020, uh, 2024, sorry. This report uh, by the New York Times, again, you have to have an account to lock in, but I'll just tell you right now. Um, it says here how false claims about immigrants and dead pets became a Trump talking point, says the New York Times. So again, they're spreading the misinformation. Sorry, I said I was going to stop. Uh, they're trying to get it out there. But here's what's funny. Nemo again coming out saying, ABC News, there's no evidence of migrants eating pets. A YouTuber, here's 30 minutes of firsthand accounts of residents in Springfield, Ohio, where many who live there say pets are disappearing. ABC News, let's talk about climate change. Let's take a quick look at what's going on here. There was Haitians in a white van driving around the neighborhoods, collecting cats, skinning them and eating them. In my opinion, they're worthless. A bunch of worthless f***ing sand monkeys. They're getting thousands of dollars in government assistance. Even the cash assistance cards, they're calling them the magic money cards because they never run out. Uh, man, it's nothing but a headache. All they're doing is raising our rent and our taxes and, and wrecking vehicles. Everybody wants to make this into a race issue. It's not a race issue. It's, it's culture, it's accountability, and it's respect. Since June, they took me off, of, I'm a vet, they took me off of the disability. You're a veteran and you're competing with some of the resources they're getting yeah. and just came in here? Yeah. I need some solutions. I'm losing my mind. This is Springfield, Ohio. What was once a small town in Ohio home to roughly 60,000 working class Americans until 20,000 plus Haitian immigrants flooded into town with rumors of them eating the neighbor's cats and local geese. What did you do? Why'd you kill the cat? Did you eat that cat? Did you eat it? No, why'd you kill it? I mean, we're not going to get too much into it because, again, uh, fair use. But, um, I mean, they're eating the dogs, they're eating the cats. <laughs> I mean, the memes are constant. They're constant. Um, they're all over the internet. We've seen them everywhere. This is what they're talking about. Eating the dogs, eating the cats. Now, if you're looking for any further proof of what's going on, let's take a look at what Elon Musk shared out on Twitter. We got a lot to say about Elon today, too. Uh, let's take a look at what was shared out here on Twitter. My father immigrated from Haiti to the United States in the late 60s um, as a teenager. And I want to talk about these recent comments about the Haitians in Springfield, Ohio. First, I want to say my father and I are now estranged, but I did know him in my very, very young years. And um, when he immigrated, he was one person and they weren't sending, you know, thousands of Haitians in one area. He wasn't eating people's pets and he didn't practice voodoo, but he did say that most of the island, the majority of the island does practice voodoo. The reason they eat cats is for two reasons. Number one is survival. This is the poorest country in the Western hemisphere. You can't just go to a food bank like you can here or just go to McDonald's and get some free or cheap food. Unless, of course, there's a Christian missionary there. People in the United States have a really hard time imagining that type of thing, but it is true. Second, they do do animal sacrifices for their religion, voodoo. They make these animal sacrifices to these gods for different reasons. You can do your own research on this. Do I think voodoo is a demonic religion? Yes, I do. That doesn't mean, obviously, that doesn't mean that you hate these people. These people need prayer. But you can't just take over all these people from another country and expect it to work. Not to mention it doesn't fix the problems of that country. And there's more people left in Haiti that we can bring over. It's not racist to acknowledge that this is a problem. It's not racist to talk about these things that are happening. This is not just white Americans saying this is black Americans. You can look at the people in Springfield, Ohio saying that this is happening. Y'all just wanna joke about Trump and say that he's crazy for saying that this is happening instead of actually checking at all to see if this is happening. You wanna make jokes about these things. Well, what if it were happening to you and your community? And no, it's beyond eating their pets, even though that is bad enough. So she's got a very good point here. This isn't about race. It's not racist to talk about it. If you look at what's happening in Canada, especially in contrast to the United States, we've been saying for ages that immigration is a mass problem in this country. We've seen it in Toronto. We've seen it in Vancouver with tent cities. We've got people pooping on beaches 
for crying out loud. We've got rampant car thefts where cars are being sent into shipping containers overseas by the truckloads we've seen, no pun intended, by the way. The mayor, the woke mayor of Toronto saying, just leave your keys by the front door. Make sure that, you know, you're not causing a problem if anybody comes to break into your home. And for any American people watching this, keep in mind, we're not allowed to defend ourselves should somebody break into our homes. In fact, if we were to defend ourselves or harm someone who breaks into our homes, we go to jail. We get arrested while they walk on just Justin Trudeau's catch and release program. Again, um, we, we've seen with migrants taking jobs, we've seen uh, in the Maritimes, people protesting temporary foreign workers that are saying we bought land, we should be allowed to stay despite being labeled as temporary immigrants and migrants. We've seen this in the United States and we're seeing poverty stricken American citizens. When you look at around Los Angeles, especially the... We talked about the crime that goes on in places like San Francisco with, with the theft, when we've talked about Gavin Newsom and his terrible, terrible laws that he's put forward for the state of California. It gets, it gets worse because now they've replaced Joe Biden. The, the Democrats are getting desperate. So they're going to try to discredit this meme, this factual thing that's happening when you import a ton of migrants into a country without vetting people. When do countries start having rules that, hey, if you're doing these things, you're deported, you're out, you're gone, you're not staying here, you have no asylum. There's no citizenship pro process, there's no legal structure. Send these people back to their countries and let their legal system pay for them. Americans and Canadians shouldn't have to pay for this kind of ridiculousness that's going on in our countries. But now the Democrats, of course, kicking out Joe Biden, throwing him under the, the, the bus because essentially he can't debate Donald Trump. He can't even stand. He doesn't know what country he's in or what universe he's in, let alone being fit to be president of the United States. Kamala Harris, of course, wasn't voted in. And who better to chime in on that than Elon Musk again? Let's take a listen to this clip party that, that cries. he puts out. Party that cries. The party that cries about how Donald Trump is a threat to democracy just forced out the candidate that their voters chose and nominated a candidate that no one voted for. The hypocrisy is immense in the Democratic Party. And this is why you see... Kamala Harris cackling and giggling during debates and you see ABC come out to fact check a former president during a debate is simply because they have no leg to stand on. When was the last time any of you watched a debate where the moderators fact checked the debaters? I, aside from Donald Trump, I have yet to see it. Let's go back to Elon Musk again. Um, while I don't think the debate hosts were fair to Donald Trump and Kamala Harris exceeded most people's expectations, that said, when it comes to getting things done, not just saying nice sounding words, I strongly believe that Trump will do a far better job. After all, if Kamala can do great things, why hasn't she? Biden rarely shows up for work, so she's basically in charge already. The question comes down to this. Do you want current trends to continue for four more years or do you want change? This is the same battle we're facing in Canada with Captain Tampon. Uh, we don't know why anybody would vote for Justin Trudeau. We don't know why anybody tries to keep him in office or says that he's doing, quote, a good job. As Donald Trump says, Joe Biden spends more time on the beach than he does in office. Uh, Kamala Harris, he also pointed out during the debate, go back to Washington, stop wasting time, stop wasting money, put forward the bills, start showing us you're going to back up your words. The reason that won't happen is because of the hypocrisy. These butt sniffers want your votes. That's all it is. Look, look at the look at the cope and seethe of people during the debates. As promised, I covered the Trump-Harris debate. What a night. Trump lost bigly. He may have even lost the election. Give me a break. Anybody who has, is anybody, I've even seen Republican, or, or sorry, Democratic supporters who watched the debate who have admitted Kamala dropped the ball. In fact, a lot of people who even support Donald Trump saying that nobody won this debate. How could Donald Trump? Now, I believe Donald Trump crushed it. However, that's a Canadian watching an American debate. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that what a lot of people saw was Donald Trump scammering. And, and of course he's going to. It was three versus one. It was a mood argument. There, he could come out with fact after fact after fact. And boy, did he have some truth bombs in that debate. But he's going to get slammed. He's going to get slammed at any point. When you understand why Kamala Harris hasn't done anything so far, take a look at this video. The Harris-Waltz campaign of lies continues. Fact check this on the record. Here we go. 
Will you commit to implementing a federal ban on fracking your first day in office, adding the United States to the list of countries who have banned this devastating practice? There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. So, yeah, and, 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 starting, and starting with what we can do on day one around public lands, right? And, um, and then there has to be legislation. But yes, and this is something I've taken on in California. I have a history of working on this issue. And to your point, um, on, you know, the, we have to just acknowledge that the residual impact of fracking is enormous in terms of the impact on the health and safety of communities. Yeah, so thank you. So would you ban offshore drilling? Yes, and I've, again, worked on that. <laughs> <laughs> cackle, cackle, cackle. Let's do offshore drilling. Let's go destroy the planet somewhere else while we make sure that we can't do anything here. It's all about money, folks. It's all about where they have their money invested, whose pockets are being lined. Follow the money. As Kevin O'Leary says, that's always the question when it comes to both Canadian and U.S. politics. Pierre Polyev in Canada has said it many times when running against Justin Trudeau. Why are we taking oil from Saudi Arabia and shipping it across seas, emitting more carbon while hypocrite Trudeau wants to say it's all about saving the environment when we have our own resources here? Alberta has some of the cleanest, in fact, the cleanest practices in the world when it comes to fracking oil, when it comes to liquid natural gas. In fact, they leave the land in better condition than what they found it in 99.9% .9 of the times with that 0.1 again being something that's out of their control. But when you look at things like the Keystone XL pipeline that was completely crushed by Joe Biden day one in office, this is all about money. It has nothing to do with the environment. The climate scam is ongoing, but we all know who the snakes in the crowd are. We all know why. Kamala Harris is not going to get the, the American vote to be president of the United States. Now, whether or not that means she becomes president is beyond me because we've seen shenanigans, to say the least. I know there's certain things we can't say on the platform. We've seen Kamala Harris talking about making X illegal in the United States, similar to the TikTok ban. We've seen her talking about uh, making Rumble illegal. We've already seen Rumble become an illegal uh, site to use in countries like Brazil. Your guess is as good as mine as to what this dystopian world is going to look like if Kamala Harris or Justin Trudeau win their next elections as the slaughter of both countries continues on. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Do you buy what's going on in Springfield, Ohio? Do you, do, do you acknowledge what's happening there as fact? Or is it just a bunch of malarkey, as Joe Biden calls it? Um, do you think that Kamala Harris is going to follow through with her promises or she's just another liar? I already know what the comments are going to be, but throw them in there anyways, ladies and gentlemen. While you're at it, leave a thumbs up. Again, it helps push the video out beyond YouTube algorithm suppressors to make sure that people get these stories. A huge thank you again to everybody who's joined our community over the last 24 hours and those who continue to grow. We're fastly approaching 40,000 subscribers. Let's not see if we can get to 50,000 by the end of October. I would love to see Unacceptable Fringe break the halfway mark to a YouTube play button. It would be fantastic. It would be unbelievable, unprecedented. We'd be winning bigly. That is the last time I will do Trump, I promise. Uh, guys, if you enjoyed the stream, make sure to turn on your bell for notifications. I hope this video has earned your subscription. Join me live here on the channel tomorrow night and every Friday night for Friday Night Fringe, our live streaming show where there's not only my Myself, but the beautiful Mrs. Fringe who joins us live on the chat. We're going to talk about the debate this week. We're going to talk about everything that happened in Canadian politics as well, and a little bit of back and forth within our quickly growing community. It's going to be great to see what you guys have to say outside of making these videos, and I look forward to speaking with each and every one of you there in the chat this Friday night, again happening at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central here on the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you on the next one.